Hey guys, Omni here. We are back for episode seven of The Haunting of Hill House. And, uh, you know, last episode, again, was tragic. It was painful to watch seeing everybody come together under these tragic circumstances. And this is the first time in forever that they've been brought together in this, under the same roof. And it's for such a sad reason. And even when that seems like they're starting to get along a little bit, there's just too much fracturing, too many questions about what's happened, what's going on. And everybody is just tearing at each other left and right. Um, and it was just hard to watch, especially when you're panning back to the house stuff. And then the, you know, Nell disappearing, not being able to be seen, trying to reach out and get people's attention and just find her and see her to that playing out in here where everything happening at this location, almost everything happening at the funeral home is Nell trying to just get their attention. And it's just, it just hurt. <laughs> it did. Um, uh, then we have like this stuff with, um, with Theo and, uh, Shirley's husband. The hell's that about? Who's this ghost, this person that Shirley keeps seeing? Um, you know, obviously, you know, not every apparition we see is necessarily a ghost or anything like that. There are, like, visions that are in the heads of some of our, our characters. Obviously, the main one, the easiest one to call out is when, um, the father returns. He's the last to show up. He see, goes in and he sees everybody as their younger selves. And when he approaches the casket, he sees young child Nell in it and it's just how he views them all still he's still just trying to protect them all um and then even Steve when he's getting drunk and stuff like he sees a vision of Nell um creeping up stand once standing in front of the coffin he takes another drink turns away looks back and it's closer and he just walks away from it um again I, that I think would be in his head that or it's the house calling because we've seen the house call to each one of them it's not actually nell trying to reach him not in that moment every other time throughout the house like the whole event i think that the rest of it's just nell trying to be seen be heard and get the attention of all of her loved ones because that's really all she cares about is them um and it's just, it was hard to it was hard to watch man um everybody came clean about the money they took from steve so Shit's, uh, shit's smeared all over the walls right now with how things are going for the family. But guys, that all down and out of the way, let's go ahead and get into episode 7. If you want to see the full-length reaction to this, remember that's on Patreon, or if you become a member here on the channel, it's just one of the ways you can help support us over here, help me get an editor so we can do more off-brand uh, off shows like this down the line um, and stuff. But if that's not a way you can support the channel... Always like, comment, subscribe, because the more engagement you give the videos, the better the videos do, and the better that helps us out. But guys, that all down and out of the way. I had my headset stuck in my hair. That hurt. Anyway, let's go ahead and dive into this episode. Now, we haven't talked about the other body. That didn't have anything to do with us. Of course not. But you can fix it right here. I will run and get you your cream of sugar. No, I don't need it. Uh, we can talk now and get this over with. Sit tight. You need to pick up four bouquets. Okay, I'll go in a minute, but can we just... You're already on your way. I have to shower and change my clothes. I mean, I didn't bring any of my... Okay. <laughs> I know you're upset with him because he took Steve's money, but he was only looking out for you and business. Service starts at 10. It's 8.30. We're not open yet. If you want to lecture someone, lecture Theo. I wonder where she gets that from. I needed my space, but not like Cheryl. Since she was three years old, Shirley needed... Shirley's space. What a mess. Oh, what a mess. And I wonder if she's real or in his head. Like, actually her spirit. Or just a construct he's developed to cope. No way all this came from a storm. No, no way. Bust a all... pipe, most likely. It shouldn't be. I can fix it. I guess technically this is the dad's episode. 
keep forgetting like how many people actually have a story to tell, which means you might get a mom episode maybe. I can't. Please don't be down here. <sighs> That's really bad. Mother Father Mucker. <laughs> really, Dad? Uh, maybe rats. Could be what happened to the pipes. When rats get thirsty enough, they'll chew through just about anything. I remember when Luke lived here. He's uh, he's looking a lot better now. You, on the other hand. Thanks, Dad. Well, no, it's just you look a little. Uh, <laughs> the. the <laughs> I'm just, you know, I've woken up plenty of mornings looking like that myself. I'm just... I fucked up last night, Daddy. Even by Crane standards. And if I make it through today alive, I'm gonna have to pack this all up and find a new place to live. And I don't think Shirley is ever gonna talk to me again. I'm sorry. I should have made more of an effort with you. You tried. As best as you could. I should have met you halfway. People fuck up. <laughs> I guess you don't get that. You don't really get it until you fuck up. And this doesn't have to do with Steve's money, does it? Do I have to shower? Um. Yeah, um. You can stay. Sit. Enjoy your coffee. That conversation. I didn't expect that. Gotta start somewhere. Hit a little bit for me, man. I have a always good at that. difficult relationship with my dad that's like quite similar to Where is it? that. I saw him for the first time in like eight years the other day. Well, not the other day, a few weeks ago. Only found out because he was in the hospital. And somebody else told me. Some of them are just scribbles, and though the work records are a mess. Well, I can't flip this house if it's rotting with mold. I'll combine these plans into one master blueprint, uh, draw up something that represents the actual piping, and then we'll find out how fucked we really are. <laughs> Don't say that. What? That you wish you'd had better role models. We were solid, babe. We were. And those last few days don't count. That wasn't us. I didn't get a chance last night to tell you how proud I am of you. 90 days. He doesn't want to make today about him. It's okay to just sit. Just be with him. You don't have to talk. There's a lot of people here. That's good. A lot of people loved her. I saw in the obit and I wanted to be here. Or you, you didn't tell me that your sister died. Oh, fuck my day. <sighs> Jesus. <laughs> I'm guessing you heard what happened at the wedding. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, we knew. Yeah. Uh, your mom, uh, she guessed it when Theo was about eight. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Oh, yeah. Present for you. Master blueprints? Master blueprints. Was that right? Your dad thinks that all this water is coming from that red room upstairs. Be safe down here, okay? It's not, is it? <laughs> it's localized. I'm betting. I was born 90 seconds before no. If I if I wanted something, I, I'd say I, I was the oldest, so. She had to do what I said, and she, she, she let me get away with it. <laughs> I mean, even though she knew it was bullshit. The, the last time I saw her, she was driving me to rehab. She looked at me, and she said, bring my brother back. Had a girl. I was born 90 seconds before no. But she was always my big sister. <laughs> Place. 
but maybe she could use a little time away from the house. Ride with us. I'll meet you there. Sure, I'll meet you there. There's plenty of space. I got a deal for you. Shit. Need a ride? <laughs> All you guys have is each other. Did Theo tell you what she did? Uh, no. Don't. <laughs> Listen to your head, wife. But you know, we all fuck up and we can be upset with each other. But one day. Oh, you're doing it. Mm. Wake up and it'll be too late. Stay the to... fuck out of my business. There it is. Stuck your hand. Right in the fan. This one's totally screwed. I'm gonna have to open it up. Steve, can you unplug it over there? <laughs> Jesus, Jesus Christ. Fuck! Dad? Yeah, buddy, you need to go to the You need to go to the doctor, dude. Then he's like staples. Dude, what what if just this door staying locked is just containing things ever so slightly and it's opening this door that unleashes all hell. Like the things that they are see they've seen so far <laughs> is just like seeping out. Stop it, Luke. I know all about it. I write about it. Hell, I've seen things this week, but it's not real. It's not. If you don't get that, if you don't get your shit together, like Mom and Nell didn't get their shit together, you're gonna end up just like them. You understand? Where? Nice. Not nice. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I was, I, was, I was having a horrible dream. You think? <laughs> it's a footprint to our house. Oh, the to future house. house. You just, you drew it again and again. I, I, I didn't. You did? I, did. I could see it. Janet's up for a visit. I see your mother every day. Well, um, it's, it's pretty nuts. Yeah, it's, uh, for me, it's a coping mechanism. And, um... Hmm. You know, it's nothing to be embarrassed about. In fact, my therapist says that it's a perfectly normal, but it doesn't mean it's always the case. I'm glad you're here, Dad. It, oh, Luke, no. God damn it. You little shits are dead. <laughs> So I guess that's the other body Good Lord. that he was talking about. It's a cane. I don't know what I don't know what that is in his hand. William Hill been missing since '48. How did he? I mean, how did he get in there? It looks like he bricked himself in. The tools were in there with him. The hmm. man, the scratches. I guess he had second thoughts. Steve, uh, I'm sorry I didn't talk. And I'm sorry I didn't listen. And I'm sorry I wasn't there. And it's the regret of my life that I couldn't fix it. What? You fly safe. Mm. Me too. I can't find my credit card. And the caterer's got to be paid. Did you tow my car? What do you mean? Luke stole her card and her keys. He's going to the house. Guys, do you want my card? I, I can pay for the. That's not the Talk. Phone. It was right here. You knew it looked wrong. He looked wrong. Has anybody seen Luke? He wanted to have a smoke. He went outside uh, about an hour ago. An hour. 
probably already has a needle in his arm. We don't know that. <sighs> What's that? Oh, God. We talked to Janet, and she never... I know. Anything you want to add to that? Not really. I thought she went out of town, but she hadn't. That's all. Your daughter Shirley says she woke you up because she was surprised to see Mom in the kitchen. That's right. And she says that you ran up the stairs to the, uh... the red room. So what did you see when you got to the red room? That door's been locked since we moved in, so... it was nothing. Motherfucker, dude. I need to know what the hell's going on. Okay, so we got... I was kind of... Well, not full credit to myself. A couple people in the comments had mentioned it as well. The construct thing. I mentioned in the beginning. Turns out that was kind of the core lesson in this episode. Sure, a lot of these things might be in our mind. But that doesn't mean everything is in our mind. So, Nell's ghost is still like... No. Like, the bent neck lady, Nell, standing over a grave, was like, no. To something. Before, she keeps trying to give Luke warnings, and this specter of their mother is still just coming after them. Hold on. So the one that Steven saw last episode, standing in front of it, walking down the pews that didn't have the broken neck. It was It's hard to tell with the makeup, but I, was that the mom? She's just after them then at this point. Or something looking like their mom. I don't know. But I like this. Like I like that he's developed this. And I guess he answered the question for me is that he developed this mental construct of his wife to get through the trauma. Um, Cause I wasn't sure if it was her spirit was latching on, but I think her spirit spirit is still trapped in the house or possessed by the house. And that maybe it didn't, it didn't definitely didn't start with them, but we're learning a little bit about the house, the weird stuff that happens, the what happened with the Dudleys there, how it kind of siphons, like I said, off of the people and uh, Claire Dudley lost her baby in there because of that. And then they hear the cries. The soul becomes a part of the house, trapped in the house, trying to draw people back in. They manage to get away from him by only visiting the house during the day and leaving before nightfall. Nice. But they lived in it day and night, day and night, day and night for a while, the entire time that they were here. He found Mr. Hill buried. Uh, within the walls, and he said he was from the way he was locked in there. So is Mr. Hill is the guy? Is that he the guy with the cane? I mean, he had a cane, but is he the floating guy that was looking for the hat that um, Luke was wearing in the one episode? Um, and was it Mrs. Hill with the red room? I think it's got to be Mrs. Hill, the widow, because she was like the false investigation to look for his body, but I'm sure she probably knew exactly where the body was. I don't know. Oh man, I need to know what's in the red room. Um, but that was seeing like his thoughts and like, you get to see what he's thinking and what he's not saying through the wife visage that he's created for himself. Like, it says these are those it's like the things in the back of his head just telling him not to do it the things in the back of his head he wants to say and then he's just always either afraid of saying it or pushes through in the wrong moments and he's not listening to it 
it's uh interesting seeing that mental back and forth because I think everybody kind of has that mental back and forth too, just with themselves a lot of the time with should I say anything, should I not? And a lot of times you either stay silent or you say something stupid and your foot's in your mouth. And I like that throughout all of this. And the what happened with Theo and the husband, uh, Kevin, is that his name? That hasn't come out yet, but I, I like him. I like the dad's interactions with everybody in the family. Um, and we got to see what happened to his hand, why it was bandaged up before that, which I'm surprised that's all that happened to his hand, but he definitely needed a doctor. Just, you can't just put a bandaid on that or a bandage on it. That needed some stitches, man. That was to the bone from what it looked like. I should know. I've been, I've had my fair share of stitches and <laughs> injuries. So, <laughs> um, I think the Luke taking the stand and talking about Nellie and then the th conversation with Theo and um, the father, uh, I think those were the two scenes that I think hit me the most in this. And I just, I really want to see him open up to Steve before it's too late while he still has this chance. And I do think Luke took that card, took Theo's car. I think he's on his way to the house because of exactly what he saw. Um, and he knows that she didn't kill herself. So I think he's out for blood or non-blood out for ether. I don't know, but he's definitely, um, that's where he's going. Like everybody's like, oh, he's going to go shoot up. No, I think he's on a quest for vengeance or answers or both vancers, vajancers. I don't know, but we'll just have to wait and find out. Cause, uh, oh, fuck, dude. The show's so good. And we still haven't actually learned why Steven and Le uh, Le Lee have split. And then, uh, I'm glad that somebody else is finally freaking out and seeing something. So, like, there's there was the dirt, the graveyard dirt that went in there and destroyed the forever house. So that's the dirt from before. This thing is just following them around. Whatever it is. Trash the forever house. It's like trying to undo everything that their mother had actually built, planned, and constructed. Like the unity in their family, the abilities that their family has, and the future that their family would will have. And she's just trying to undo all of it. Almost like the complete opposite of Nellie is whatever this entity is that's drawing them all back, trying to tear them all down, siphon their souls, crawling out from behind Shirley's desk and coming at Theo and the dad, and they both saw it together. Shirley, of course, thinks they did it because she's in the state of mind. She's in the, the state of mind she's in. I'm, I wouldn't put... I, I highly... I definitely understand why she would think that they broke and busted up her house, or maybe that even Luke did it. Um, and then we're learning what he told the cops, and I we're I assume in the next episode, going to find out what's in the red room. Um, I don't know. We've had everybody's perspective, I think, so far, except for the mom. There's seven episodes or seven of them. Was there an ep was the first, I guess if you count the first episode, it was really kind of like the setup. It didn't really focus on any one person. So maybe we got one more and then we'll start weaving everything together. I don't know. Our, the, the, the show is so deliberately structured that everything's like a puzzle piece, but everything's getting its moment to shine. Um, Actually, have we had a show? Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, I'm not going to linger on it too much longer here. I loved it. I love this episode. Got some tears out of me on this one. Um, but I want revenge on this house. I want this house to burn. I want it to die. <laughs> anyway, for what it did to Nelly and uh, now what it's subsequently doing to the family. But anyway... That's been my thoughts, guys, on this episode. I'd love to know yours. Sound off the comments. Let me know your thoughts down below. We'll carry on the conversation after the video. You can also join us in our Discord, and we can talk about it there.
Links and all that are down in the description below. Remember, if you want to see the full-length unedited reaction to this entire episode for every episode we've been covering so far or every show that we've covered this year, you can check that out over on Patreon or if you become a member here on the channel, it gets you access to that as well. As speaking of, I want to shout out our channel legends, Mandy Sherritt, Ryan Karen, Jason Coleman, Philly Vane, Yori Korskov, Margaret Grace, Peeling Zem, and Mary Bradley. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. But that's it for this video, guys. I'll see you in the next episode of The Haunting of Hill House. Take care, everybody, and happy Halloween.